All right, guys. So welcome to another episode of the Imperfectly Perfect podcast, where each week I am joined by some of the world's most renowned faces in the entertainment industry, on the sports field, corporate leaders, inspirational thought leaders all around the world, each sharing their own truth and personal journeys. Now, I am excited and I hope you are because this marks season 15. I hope you've all checked out the last season of 14 because this one, we are going even bigger. We've been working tirelessly, we've been working aimlessly to get more of the world's most recognized and respected faces across all industries to share those stories. Because we all know the IPC is about the story you were sat on, somebody out there is waiting to hear. And I know there's a lot of people who shoot messages, shoot emails, they DM us all the time about the encouragement they're getting from hearing people that they recognize share their stories. And they're feeling a sense of easiness when it comes to sharing their story. They're resonating with people's story that they look up to or maybe who inspires them and they seek help, which is incredible. And that is one of the main reasons for IPC doing what it does. 365 days a year, sharing stories, sharing posts. Now I wanted to jump on for the start of season 15 because I said earlier on in season 14, I was going to jump on and start talking about the process and the ins and outs of IPC and what it's taken. Now, a lot of people do know the story about, yes, it's taken me a lot, jumping on construction, doing all this, learning how to network, learning how to do PR, learning how to do everything, all facets. But it still doesn't make people stop thinking at times who come across it, that it's this huge organization and it's got all these teams and funding and resources. Let me tell you guys, From day one, I've stepped forward with integrity, with morals and transparency in showcasing what it actually takes to build something, to lead with a righteous heart. And what do I mean by that? It means by leading by integrity and doing things for the right reasons. I've never said it's been easy. I've certainly never said it's this huge organization with huge multitude of teams. I've had people along the way, and this is what I'm going to talk about, because when this episode goes to air and it talks about encouragement, I want those people who know they have had something placed on their heart and they want to get it out to the world, I want to showcase and I want to speak to that very nature of what it truly does take. Yes, there's blessings. Yes, there's opportunities. And I'm forever grateful for all them. Yes, it's brought me to faith in terms of building a personal relationship with God and seeing that this has been led from day one. And no, as everybody knows who listens to this podcast, I'm not religious, never have been, never will be. However, IPC led me through personal development. It opened my eyes to seeing the world in different ways, which led me to a path of spirituality, to explore more things, to question things. What came from that was a lot more inspirational people of faith that started talking to me and giving me messages and downloads and telling me that this was being led because it was being led by integrity and the true nature of what imperfectly perfect is. This world is starting to get exposed for what it truly is. There's a lot of masks. A lot of things have been covered up for way too long and it's all coming to the surface. And people can't hide the fact these days that we all have imperfections and we should actually embrace them and go back to basics and help one another and help people grow. Because in a day and age where we do see, and I talk about it often when I do mentor people as well, this compete, this compare, this judgment nature, if we can try and remove that, we can all lead a healthier and a better life. Now, I'm not here to preach. I'm just here to share my thoughts for those people who might need that encouragement to start something themselves. Because what do we often fall into? We fall into the trap of fear, fear of what people are going to think about us, fear of judgment. However, if I can say anything, what I've noticed on this journey is it's lonely, incredibly lonely, and you need a support group around you that clap the loudest when you're excelling at something, that are picking you up off the floor when you're not, because it gets damn hard. And yes, you might see when we promote and we market it as over 450 influential public figures from celebrities to corporate to sports. You might see over 150 plus publications and networks. That's amazing. 
it leverages it so we can create a ripple effect to hit more people, which means we can inspire more people. But to get this message out that everything isn't always rosy, and that is the whole point of IPC, to embrace what being imperfectly perfect means to you, that those flaws or our lives is a true reflection of reality. We all have struggles. And if I can showcase through IPC with who I've spoken to, I'm grateful because the wisdom I've learned and the lessons I've learned from each and every person inspire me. I've spoken to people who are from Hollywood, who are famous, who have had all the fame in the world, but it hasn't made them happy. I've met millionaires. I've met billionaires through this campaign. They've acquired the most amount of wealth in a lifetime that so many of us could only hope for. Did it make them happy? No. So then we've got to think, because I certainly started to think, well, what is it or who is it that's making us all think that we need to attain fame, that we need to attain money to live this happiness of a lifestyle when really we're missing out on the fundamental things and it's memories and it's friendships and it's, it's really enabling everyone to come together as a collective and grow. And if you look, if you really pay attention to IPC, and I only say this now because along my journey, I've learned that this has been led, whether you believe in spirituality, whether you believe in God, universe, law of attraction, anything. I'm not here to impart my beliefs on you, but I can share my journey, my testimony, my experiences. And if you look at the IPC and you've seen how it's continually grown over four years organically, and as you see, we post screenshots every time an episode goes out to show how many people are listening. We show the newsletter that goes out to, it was 30,000, then it went to 26,000 because we went down another route of listening to somebody who's doing an email blast out. And we went down the route of what we was doing. We was doing a summit that people had never heard of. And like I said at the beginning, I was doing this for over two years. I didn't have additional resources to actually get a platform to hold that many or that much of a database in, should I say. So I went and utilized a platform where you got 2,000 contacts for free. I had 10 accounts and I had to keep on dropping the CSV file so I could upload another one, make another email to keep it going. So as you can imagine, along that time period, a lot of people weren't hearing from me, myself and I. So when we brought people on, and much to them, they were incredible. They were doing email blasts, they were doing this, that and the other. And then these people who were dormant, who hadn't heard from us will suddenly get inundated with emails about a summit and this and that and that. Well, it would have been too much for anybody. So we lost some of that database, but then we started accumulating more because I started doing more initiatives. People wanted to get involved. And this is one of the things I will say, guys, I am pleased to announce we have got Imperfectly Perfect Publishing. The house is on the cards. We are starting the intake Already, it's live right now. So if you're interested, that story that you're sat on and you want to get it out to the world on the Imperfectly Perfect campaign, applications are now open. And it's only for those that really want to inspire and make an impact with their story and they're ready to move forward with the IPC, to go under some guidance, to be featured on the IPC in our book series with celebrity co-authors. There's also some more exciting news that all the visual imagery of all the celebrities that if you are watching this on YouTube, you can see behind me, there is going to be a feature coffee table book. That's going to come out in 2023. But currently, we are seeking sponsors, some major sponsors that obviously want to help us get this out to the world as well. And this is where I talk about encouragement when people think it's it's this huge organization that can just pull this in, this in, this in, this in. Like I say, everything has been organic. So me, myself, and I, yes, I brought together people collective and people have enabled it to grow, share, which is amazing. You want to know how many organizations have reached out because they've seen the impact, they've seen the reach, they've seen the stats because it's everywhere that I put it. We put a newsletter out and it basically has an open rate. Say we sent one out to 26,000, we had an open rate of like 21,000. Incredible for an organic reach, which shows we've got a, um, a committed community. The podcast has never had advertising. It's never had any sort of thing on it because, again, I didn't have the resources. I was jumping on construction to pay my mortgage. I've got a family, putting food on the table. 
And yet we've got over 150,000 download organic. Now, some people might be saying, well, that's not a lot. That's a lot when it's organic and it's just organic traction of coming in. And this is hitting most months when we have several thousand on each episode. And that's what I'm excited about because it truly does show you that if we lead by our imperfections, we've got all the power within us to achieve what it is we want. We are allowing ourselves a lot of the times because as you know, I've spoken about this. We are indoctrinated into a system. When we go to school, we listen, we get media manipulation. We need to do this. We need to have this. We need to look like this. And then when this entrepreneurial journey comes and there's so many of these so-called experts about it, well, they're telling you to do it this way and saying that this can't be done. And then here comes Glenn, who didn't have additional resources, who reached out to people on social media and took something to the world in 12 months and has now featured on every or nearly every major publication across Australia and then America coming up. It's insane. And it blows my mind thinking about it. But it isn't coming from a place of ego. It's coming from a place of humility because I don't know what I don't know, as I often say. And I'm very, very humble. And I'm probably too transparent at times to my detriment, whereas I do share a lot. And maybe that's because I do lead from the heart. And then there will be people in business who will say, you share too much. I had somebody on the campaign a long, long time ago who told me because of the size of it and because of the names, I needed to let these organizations and businesses know that we meant business, that we were this huge organization and that we were this, 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 and this. What did that do? I listened to them at the beginning. But with that meant, that these organizations meant that we didn't need help. We didn't need contributions. We didn't need this because we were fine. We were this big organization. So rule number one, guys, it was a confirmation to me to always lead by the truth and transparency. Because as soon as that person moved away, I ditched that. <laughs> I ditched that straight away. I was like, this doesn't make sense. How can I say that I need help when people or organizations specifically are thinking that with this huge organization, people often say, why didn't you get grants or why didn't you get funding? Because for me, I don't believe in that. Now, if it comes from somebody that's so still like an angel investor, of course. Do I know angel investors? Not everyday angel investors, no. This is a guy from Yorkshire who moved to Australia, working class family, has just led by putting one foot in front of the other. I haven't got a speed dial of angel investors to suddenly just pour into it. However, the more it's grown, the more it's come to full fruition. But when people often say, are you a charity? Well, behind the scenes, I actually got a role working for one. I saw a lot of political things that I didn't like. I found out a lot of things behind the scenes that again, went against my morals. And I'm never going to say what or who, because I don't make judgment. I just move away. I don't need to be in that energetic space because for me, if I'm leading this, as I say, it might take longer. I might have to have patience. But as long as I've got those opportunities on the side, which is enabling me to work, to acquire money for my family and keep moving forward, I can keep doing this. Because there are a lot of people along that way as well. And this is why I'm telling you as encouragement. There will be people along the way that will judge you, that will think you're mad for doing it. Well, if you're not making money from it, why are you doing it? Well, something's been placed on my heart that I want to make a difference. So the day that I pass, at least I can say I've created a legacy and let my kids know that I did something. And once you put your mind to it, and then if you look at truly successful people, this is what I often say. In this day and age, we're seeing so many of these people pop up on social media and saying they're earning X amount of money in a short period of time. But yet you'll get those truly successful people who have generational wealth, who I've spoken to on the podcast and off the podcast, who have said it's taken 10 to 20 years to become an overnight success and acquire any type of monetary value to the point where they could stop working and they could concentrate solely on things. So if I'm on this journey for the long run and I've been on it for four years now, then so be it. Everyone has different values. Everyone has different morals. Everyone has different integrity. 
you do you and I do me. That's what I always say to people. So those people who are listening to this for encouragement, who want to start something, had it laid on the heart, or maybe they are doing something and they're experiencing all these types of things. Just know you're not alone. But if you do go to my Instagram, at underscore Glenn Marsden, you will see the whole way through when I was on construction, the amount of hours, when I was hosing a bloody wall for 12 hours a day, it gave me clarity. I learned how to do business plans. I learned how to move forward, pitch decks, PR releases, the lot. So you think whilst you're doing all that, you're acquiring a lot of knowledge and you're actually enjoying the process because you're becoming stronger in the person that you are. However, the downsides to it all, I can take you through a lot of stories, experiences, and I can come out and honestly say there was shit to go through. It made me question everything. It made me wonder why I was doing it. It was making me cynical of people, cynical of people running organizations, everything. And this is why I say it's necessary to get a strong support system because this journey can be lonely, but it can downright make you question your sanity and everything. And especially if you're doing things towards mental health, you wouldn't think there was people doing it for the wrong reasons. And I'm not talking about individuals as such, but organizations out there, um, not the ones that are doing it for the good, but I'm talking about just companies. Each to their own, they can do what they want. But what I've learned along my journey, and I'm thankful for having that support system of people who are faith-based or spiritual, is because you will notice people when they have gone through adversity, they couldn't care less about titles or professions or what you can do for people. As I said, they'll be there to clap the loudest when you're succeeding because they know that you've worked hard and they know that you are achieving everything that you set out. But equally, when you're on that floor, when you feel like quitting, they will pull you up and they will keep you going each and every day. And I'm grateful to each and every one of those people along my journey. Because if it wasn't, I may not have carried on with what I've done for four years going onwards. Even at the latter end, or should I say, let's start at the beginning. When I started this and the images started going viral, should I say, within Australia and the publicity it was picking up, I had a company to reach out and there was very much pleasantries all the way and I got introduced to them. And what they wanted to do with those pleasantries was shake hands and basically say, if you can push our organization in front because we're helping people, that would be absolutely amazing. And if you need any help, let us know. So what did I say in transparency? I was like, oh, I love to actually work for you guys because I believe in what you're doing. Well, we don't have additional resources to bring you on, but what we can do is keep helping you when you're doing this. Um, and then on top of it, when the publicity started coming in and I was told by one person, well, next time you go on, I'll come on with you because obviously I'm an expert in this area and I can give whatever, all the knowledge. And that's when something, there, there was kind of this discernment, I always say in my stomach going, hang on a minute. So I'm doing all the work and I'm also working full time and you want to come on the TV with me to showcase what you're doing. However, I'm doing everything and you haven't got a job. You haven't got additional resources. This don't make sense. And you guys are actually making money off some of these courses that you're actually doing. Um, so I started spotting it and there was e email exchanges and I got frustrated. I was like, well, this is what you promised. This is what you did. And then you wanted to shake hands. You didn't want an agreement in place. That was lesson number one. Make sure that if you're doing anything when it comes to business, that you've got an agreement in place. That's not to say that you can't have handshakes with people that you've built trust, integrity for a long time. However, I will never do anything like that again because it put a really sour taste in my mouth of not knowing who to trust and I didn't know whether to continue because it was just like, hold on a minute. Furthermore, there would be people coming along as it started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. People were like, I'm a huge advocate. I want to help you. I want to get this out. I want to do this. I'd bring them along because I was very grateful for people wanting to help. What I did find myself doing and what a lot of people do who are compassionate and want to see everyone succeed is that you will tend to put yourself in a position. If you cannot pay people, you will try and help them acquire things, opportunities. So what I was doing, I was getting people who was helping me on podcasts on shows. I was introducing them to people that I was meeting, public figures. Now, if I'd have thought about that quite smart, which I didn't, I was naive at the beginning. It was the fact that 
They wanted to help because they wanted to help. I was putting myself in a place of giving to every single person. And then as soon as some people got what they want, they moved away. And they were that much of an ad advocate for what I was doing that they no longer shared anything. They didn't talk about it. I didn't hear from them. So again, another lesson learned. Sometimes people will come on your journey to teach you lessons and not always for the niceties or the pleasantries that you go through, but it makes you stronger. You start gaining the discernment to realize that not everybody is there to help you move forward with whatever's been placed on your heart. And that's fine because if you can learn from it and you can grow from it, you can move forward. Other experiences. I had people come along and start imposing themselves onto the IPC saying they'd done things for it and that they wanted this for it and they wanted to come on publicity for it. Every time it was going, they wanted to name on it. And I was like, hang on a minute. Nobody ever asked you to do this and you've imposed yourself onto something that is essentially a mission that's been placed onto my heart. And now you want wanting to come every time there's publicity on it. You want it to be named on it. You want it to do this on it. Again, luckily I had a support network to move me through. So you might be listening to this right now going, oh my God, like do not let this stop you because if I can share my stories, my experiences and the wisdom that I've taken and I've learned and that I've acquired to get a lot stronger through it in business, whatever you want to call it, entrepreneurial journey, whatever. There's too many titles in this world. I'm just saying on your journey, but it makes you stronger. And if you look at anything through, it's funny when I say this because I'm not imparting my beliefs on you, but now I look at it in the eyes of I've got my faith that this has been led and it's been confirmed. So if I look at it in that way, if I didn't have gone through those experiences at the beginning, I wouldn't be here, the person I am now, to, as I say, the word discernment, to know and to spot when people are coming to it for the right reasons, when people are coming to it for the wrong reasons. So I would say, enjoy the process. And it sounds so corny when people say, it's not the end result. It's the journey because that's the process who makes you become or what makes you become the person that you will be, that you need to be to succeed. So if I didn't have gone through that, I wouldn't be here now and spotting it when it happens. And let me tell you, it's happened over and over again. But what you also tend to notice is those patterns will repeat themselves as long as you allow them to. So there was one where I had to find my voice. I started noticing that there was certain things that were happening that I was working around people and the platform was getting larger and larger and larger to the point where if there was any kind of ego, I could have said to these people, hang on a minute, you're acting as if you're up here and I'm down here and I need to work around your schedule. However, if I wanted to turn that around and say, excuse me, do you know the size of this platform could actually help you? but you're talking down to me like I need to do things on your time scale. All that was, was a case of me learning that and spotting it and using my voice. So you can see another lesson. But until I learned that lesson, I was allowing it to happen to me. And, you know, even sometimes you come and say, wow, that's a lot. And even internally as a guy, you think, how can you let people take advantage of you? You don't know what you don't know. And especially if you're not adapting any, any formalities of business other than working in a nine to five for a corporation. And yes, you might be a manager, you might be a CEO, but you know how things work. But when you're out on your own, whoa, it's a different kettle of fish. So you have to walk forward in this journey, fully embrace it, not become cynical, find the right people because you're going to meet a lot of the wrong people until you get to those right people. And this is why I say every single person that's come on my journey in terms of the public figures, I have so much appreciation for what they've gone through because to get to where they have and to understand their story, this narrative that we paint or we often paint in our head, the pictures of what we think they are or who they are because of what we see on screen or what the media makes them out to be is completely opposite to the person that they actually are. And when you get to understand what it's taken and how many people have slept in the cars or 
been on the streets or they've gone through addiction or they've gone through depression, anxiety, panic attacks, and yet you see one snippet of a life on a TV show and you make judgment or a call on that person. And then the media perpetuates it onto something, which again, attributes to mental health. So it's this endless cycle. So if anything, I would say to people to remove fear, to remove judgment, comparing or competing towards anyone or anything, get to know somebody, get to understand that person before you read anything in the media, before you make judgment based on somebody else's perception of somebody, you get to know the person. Because if you truly know the story or the journey they've been through, you probably end up clapping the loudest for them. And when you do see some succeeding, you'll be clapping the loudest because you're going, it's your time. You deserve this with the amount of shit that you have been through and you're still standing. It is incredible, guys. And they are some of the blessings that I have taken from IPC and I continue to take. Because the more and more we can go through storytelling and hear what people have been through, it makes us accept everyone for those flaws, for those imperfections and the way that people are, the way that people act. And it makes us more compassionate. You see all these things sometimes where it's like hashtag spread kindness, spread empathy, spread compassion. And they do months and they do days and it goes well. And then it kind of like it fades off until the next thing comes up. This is one of the things that IPC was trying to go against. So 365 days a year, it might have been me and myself and I for like two years posting consistently across nine social media platforms, going live, bringing people together, doing events, virtual events. And then luckily making some incredible friendships with the celebrities who believed in what I was doing and saw the sincerity and wanting to actively help that came on and did the events with me. Because if we can inspire and impact each person, we can create a ripple effect. And this is one of those things with a book, positively impact billions of lives. How do we do that? Sharing our stories. There's a lot of people out there that don't know where to begin when it comes to sharing the stories. So if IPC can be that catalyst to get your voice heard or to share that, then hey, reach out today. Go straight to the website and you can find and acquire all the information to do that. But back to the point of this podcast or this episode, the reason why I wanted to do it, as I said, and stipulated at the beginning, is about encouragement. We can all go through, we can all listen to stories, we can all have something placed on our heart, and oftentimes that fear gets in our head. So encouragement from somebody that has stepped out, that's dared to stand up on his own, against all these organizations that were doing incredible things who a lot of them have funding, a lot of them have aid from the government. People have come, organizations have come. I was speaking to Grant and Cheryl Denya on their show. Those guys are amazing. They understood straight away. There's a lot of people who understood. And there are organizations who would reach out and I'd be going towards sponsorship for them. Again, not my experience. I'd reach out, I'd pick up the phone. You have to be resilient. You have to do things and get uncomfortable. I'd reach out to them. I'd send a pitch deck. And then one of the big things would be like, are you a charity, a registered charity? Well, no. We're a for-profit so that we can make profit and we can actually give to the people that we want to give to. Just like a business, just like anything else. And the big reason for doing that was obviously, like I said earlier, I saw experiences and things that didn't fit with my morals or integrity. And a lot of people will know I always joke. And it did get confirmed by somebody once who said, you're almost like one of these uh, caricatures. And this was a person of faith who gave me the message that didn't know me, who's from the US. And it was like, I keep getting this message about you taking from the rich and giving to the poor. I was like, yep. That was only told to a few close people in my circle. And what that actually was attributing to was confirmation that I was hearing something far beyond where we are in the plane, reality, to Robin Hood. I always joked, but was being very serious, that I did want to walk this path and be like Robin Hood. Take from the organizations who make multi-million dollars a year in profits and help the public that really can't access aid. And I spoke about it before that there was a woman that I came across on TikTok who was crying because she'd gone to a doctor's appointment, mental health. She was late by 10 minutes and they canceled it and said she'd have to rebook in, what, two months, three months or something like that. That disturbed me. Now, I'm not questioning 
the medical set. I'm not questioning what that doctor was or who that what 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 were the scenario. We only hear half a story as we often do. It just disturbed me to see someone that much distress when she was struggling. I always said, like Robin Hood, I want to be able to. But then you'll will have the organizations and hey, again, no judgment. They've got all the right to do stuff. But nine out of ten times, they will want to pour in at the end of the financial year to offload or get a tax rebate or anything like that. And for me, if I'm going to walk this path full of my morals and integrity, you're going to put your money where your mouth is. If you truly believe we are making a difference, if organically I have been able to organically bring this many people together all around the world and impact over 8 million lives, then we're onto something. We've got resources, we've got events, we've got virtual hangs. We've got the podcast that's acquiring hundreds of thousands of downloads. We've got the magazine that's making the difference. We've got the portraiture book coming up. So if you're a company or somebody who works for a large organization that does want to truly make a difference and not think at the end of the day about a tax rebate, then we do want to hear from you. Now, as I say, each to their own. I'm not here to say I know everything or to question everything, but I can challenge the narrative. And if we truly want to make a difference, then let's start those conversations. Because there are people out there who are doing incredible things, who are finding things hard to be sustainable because people are pouring in to many of the organizations that are already getting millions of dollars each year. And that's great because the research and the difference is great. But the more people we can actively help, the more people we can pour into, the further we can go to impact people. Because this day and age, what's laid on my heart is we are still seeing far too many people struggle, missing mental health appointments. We're seeing it all. But there's millions of dollars going somewhere. So why don't we start looking at resources to educate each and every one of us, the public. And I get so passionate about it because I've been doing this and walking along this researching. I've been speaking to so many clinical psychologists, doctors, neuroscientists, everybody for the past four years. And I love this topic. And I will talk to anybody about it. And I go off track because this is just more about encouragement. Like I was saying, I want people who have this place on their heart to do whatever to make a difference to go for it, but to know that it ain't an easy journey. You might see a lot of things on a highlight reel. Or, as I say, the imperfectly perfect. We might be very transparent, or I might be very transparent in showing the behind the scenes, a lot of it. But you will never know the half of it. You will when one day I bring an autobiography out and talk about leading by my imperfections, (laughs) whenever that is. But... I don't want anyone ever to think that it has been an easy journey and it's an ongoing journey. And like some of those most successful people in the world that have built generational wealth, it has taken them years. And trust me, there's people being along, like I was saying, along my journey that have doubted me, that have questioned me, that have told me when am I going to stop. They'd only come to me to see what they can get or to jump on when it suits them. People that I don't hear from, but all of a sudden we'll hear from them when they see an opportunity for themselves. All of it, guys. But it is all necessary, I believe, to go through to become the person that you were always meant to be. So this is going a little bit deep today, which is cool. But I do truly believe that every one of us has it in us to make a difference in this world. And that's why I wanted to start this one, season 15, with that encouragement. Because as much stories as you listen to, it's amazing. And you can take something from each and every person's story. But if you don't get started on something because you're trapped in fear or you're trapped in this notion that you're never going to achieve something because you haven't got the resources, you can't do this, you haven't got the support network, trust me when I say you will find them. If I can take something, a guy from Yorkshire, working class family, they're surprised with what I've achieved and what I've been able to do. I literally came from a small Yorkshire village in the UK. Not many people have moved out of that area. 
and I went traveling. I always knew that I needed to get out of there and go and see the world. And I never went back. And I've only been back once when obviously I introduced my fiance at the time, now my wife, to my family. Now, I just made them come over to Australia because there's a lot nicer weather. <laughs> but in saying that, did I see myself doing this? No. Did I think I'd be able to acquire and do all this? No. But sometimes it takes a leap of faith and belief in yourself. But that belief in yourself can be hard. Think about coming from a working class family, an environment that, yes, I'm very fortunate. I've, I had a loving family. We didn't always have enough to get by. Never put that on my parents or anything because we got enough to get by. Uh, my parents split up. So I went through all that process as well. So I carried a lot of baggage with me, went traveling. There was even points when I was traveling, I always used to bring people together. Um, then it moved forward, moved to Australia, moved into the fitness arena. Then I started noticing as I left the fitness arena, uh, arena, arena, I didn't hear from many people. And I started to realize why I'm not hearing from people when everyone always used to be around me. And it was because I weren't working there. I couldn't do things for people. So that was another lesson that I needed to learn. And sometimes you need to learn these harsh lessons and they are bloody harsh because if you are surrounded by people and then it goes down to nobody and you're like, hold on a minute, where, where is everyone? Oh, that's right. Because I can't get people classes or I can't get people opportunities. People aren't around me. These are some of the hardest things you will go through. And that's why I always talk about business. You can learn, you can acquire, you can keep putting one foot in front of the other. It's hard. It's bloody hard. But it's easier than learning about people. That is the hardest thing because we're never going to know what somebody else's story is, what they're going through. We're never going to know if there's wolves in sheep clothing, as I often say. Not everyone's for you. Not everybody wants to see you succeed. People want to hold you back. People compete, compare. And why I often say, if you can look at people's journey or get to know them, you'll start competing and comparing. You can move forward and you can try and help each other grow because I'm always under the... The thing, I, I used to watch people like when it came to my photography and I used to say to people and, uh, and people can attribute to this. I used to say, why do people never come together and do collab collaborative projects? Because wouldn't you think that everyone can succeed, the wealth can be shared and people can grow together? Don't work like that, Glenn. But why doesn't it work like that? Why don't we go back to basics? Maybe this pandemic has shown us that we do need to go truly back to basics and we need to actually connect with each other, share food, Make sure that that person who hasn't got any has some. Make sure the wealth is shared. Make sure you can try your best and lead from your heart. Because at the end of the day, when we all pass, we can't take anything with us, monetary value or monetary wise or external things. We can't take external validation from everybody else. So we may as well enjoy the time we're here and embrace those imperfections and make some memories that can last us a lifetime or make a legacy that can help future generations. Because I don't know about you, those people that I'm talking to in this that need that bit of encouragement, you might be sitting there and you might be trying something and thinking it's not working and you might be getting frustrated, which is meaning you're going into habitual cycles, maybe that's your trigger points and it's keeping you there from moving forward. There's been so many lessons along the way that I can tell you that I've been frustrated or this and people see the names getting bigger on the campaign and yes, People talk about energetic flow. They talk about manifestations. They talk about this. Trust me, I've been down those routes as well. I was talking about the faith thing the other day. I was talking about spirituality. That's why I'm always open and say, I'm not religious, really, never will be. I won't impart my beliefs on anybody else. But there's also an app that people can go on. They can go on network. You can meet people. And there's a lot of people there that are seeking answers. And they go in these rooms, which are faith-based rooms. And there are a lot of people on there that start pouring into people but yet they will place their cash app or their PayPal on top and start telling people to pour into their ministry or pour into them. And then their blessings will come true. And for me, I was listening to a lot of this and you would think the way that I'm saying it, who would fall for that? Unfortunately, when people are struggling and people are seeking answers and they're looking outside of their reality, people fall for it. I was getting drawn into it at one point. I wasn't seeing anything happening with IPC. I was working all these hours. I was on construction. I was like, hang on a minute. How is it? What's going on? You start questioning every single thing. 
So if spirituality comes upon you and then faith and you're in this room and there's people pouring into you and then suddenly telling you that they're being told that you've got to pour into them, then your blessings will come true. And you're seeing people hand over money. And for me, again, I'll use the word discernment. I started picking up on a lot of things within those rooms going, hang on a minute, this doesn't feel right. So if you're trying to say to people that God's telling you as that person who's pouring into them, that they need to pour into you and your ministry to make their blessings come, then how is that working? Because the God that I believe in would not make somebody who's already struggling, who doesn't have those finances, dig deep into their pocket when they might need that money to pay rent or they might need to put food on the table for their kids to pay you so you can do forward things and leave them in more of a destitute area of financial hardship, but you're okay. That, that doesn't make sense to me. The God that I've come to know or, or what I talk about is, wouldn't he be telling you that this person's struggling financially so you could ask people or you yourself could pour into that person? And these people are talking about sowing seeds and you need to sow seeds and you need to do this. Now, I've come to learn sowing seeds can be anything from encouragement, giving your time, a little bit of wisdom. Wisdom's free. The experiences that we go through in life, it's free. If our stories are meant to inspire, encourage, help other people along that journey, it's free. Now, if it comes to business and people need to acquire or gain the knowledge or you help them with business, there can be a fee attached to that. Obviously, it's what makes the world go around. People have things they need to buy. People have bills, all of it. Nobody can take that notion away. But a bit of wisdom to give someone encouragement and to help somebody up, isn't that faith? Or oh, that's what I've come to learn and that's what I believe. And if that's walking a righteous path with morals and integrity to help that person up and pour into them, that gives them a little bit of encouragement, like I'm doing on this podcast, a bit of encouragement that helps somebody who may have something placed on the heart, who wants to start something or restart something, who's questioning their abilities or thinking about quitting. And if I can pour what I've learned into it through sharing my stories and you keep on going another day, another week, another year, and you get there, then so be it. So there's a long, long journey, a long process that it can take, guys. So as much as you look at things on an external or think that person's lucky or that person's this or that person's that, or you look at the IPC and you see this, that, and the other, the shiny stuff that you see, even though it's not a pretty campaign, I keep it very real. But what I talk about when I mean the shiny stuff, the publicity, the celebrities, all this, that, and the other, just know there's a huge story behind it, a huge story of hardship, a huge story of struggle. Yes, blessings, opportunities along the way, which I'm very, very grateful and never take for granted whatsoever. But is it where it needs to be yet? No. Why do I share the truth? Because there is going to be someone out there that possibly does have the resources, that doesn't care about the external things or whether they get a tax rebate. Maybe they are an angel investor. And they go, you know what? That guy is truly leading from his heart. And if he could do that organically, imagine if we pour some money into him. He's already taken it to the world. He's already got a reach and a community of X amount of people. And there's been no money behind it. Yes, he's monetized it to the point where he can keep it sustainable and moving along. But you imagine what he could do with this and make a difference. That's a thought leader. And that's not bigging myself up. Anybody can do that. If you have belief and you take a leap of faith, so anyone that's listening, if you've got a leap of faith or if you've got the belief in yourself, just go for it, guys. So I'm going to finish it there because I could go on forever. That's going to be the start of my autobiography. <laughs> so season 15, it is starting next week, guys. We have an Olympian. We have more Hollywood stars. We have more of Australia's biggest names, that are on the campaign already. We have got some more clinical psychologists, doctors, people that you recognize, people that you may recognize from the past that we never knew because we saw them on screen and we thought that we're living a life of Riley. So many, so many. And I also want you to remember, as the community guys, make sure you hit all the links because we do have the Imperfectly Perfect Club. It is a free platform. You can go on there and everything's under one roof. The podcast, the magazine, it's more like 
cross between Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, everything's on there. Now, I'm not saying that you need to go on there. If you want to join it and you can keep up to date just with everything under one roof to make it cleaner, then so be it. Make sure if you haven't yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel because all these episodes are featured live on there. If you prefer watching it on an evening, grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee, whatever you drink of your choices, grab it, sit down. If you can get some encouragement from it, then so be it. As I say, season 15 is starting next week. Make sure if you haven't caught up on some of the stuff that we've been doing, go to the official website at imperfectlyperfectcampaign.org. Go to the news Join the initiatives. If you do want to do something, but you may be thinking, well, I don't know where to get started. Get started and volunteer for the IPC, as in volunteer your time with doing the initiatives, sharing the message, spreading it. We all have the ability to use the God-given voice we've been given. And if you believe in something, share it. It's not for me not for the IPC. It's for that person out there that may need to hear it. The same as your story. As I said, Imperfectly Perfect campaign book series volume one is starting in February 2023. Applications are open now. If you do want to share that story that you are sat on to a global platform, we have celebrity co-authors that are coming on as well. This is an incredible opportunity, guys. You are guided through the process. You become a co-author. And at the same time, you get to positively impact a lot, a lot of people with your story. Now, it's not for everybody. Some people won't be ready. You do go through an inquiry form. There is an application process. The team then get through to me and you interview with myself where I go through all the information and I ultimately see if you're ready for the next step. As I say, not everybody will get through. They might not be ready this time. Other than that, As I said, we are looking for a lot of major sponsors in relation to the portraiture book. So Australia, the biggest celebrities in Australia featuring in this book. We're going to launch it at a gallery in Sydney, get a star-studded event on. Think about it, guys. If you are somebody that's wanting to truly make a difference and get behind something with this many public figures under one roof, making a difference for mental health and you can impact and you can pour into IPC so we can truly make a difference, then let's do this together. Let's tackle mental health together. This is not just a small campaign. You have seen collectively, we have gone to the world. We have done a lot to become one of the most publicized movements with the least amount of resources. And it just goes to show you If you take that leap of faith and you have belief, you can do it yourself. So I'm going to leave it there, guys. But as I often sign off, make sure you keep having the hard conversations because it is the hard conversations that save lives.